Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the questions that were asked in Mindtree Company. So let us get started without wasting much time. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. So before we get started, let us thank our subscriber who has shared us this question so that it can be of help to others who are preparing. So from you know uh, the level of uh, what you call complexity, if I consider it is above medium to high level. And I expect you reach this level so that you know you can clear the interviews that are happening these days because uh, you know these days we are not getting much of the basic questions uh, anywhere. Hardly we get only two to three questions that are related, but other questions are more towards scenario based. So you can always refer to my scenario based questions, and you know uh, that can help you in clearing that. So now if you see the first question is again related to a very real time challenge that many of our developers face. So the question here is uh, dealing with the currencies. So given a table with customer ID sales and region, how will you dynamically change the currency value of sales? So this I'll create a dedicated video because we need to create a uh, first of all values and write some calculations and to make it dynamic according to the country and all. So I'll, I'll be creating a separate video on this. What is an MT extract and where is it useful? Now MT extract is one real time scenario where many of our developers create. In cases, in cases where you have a huge volume of data and the extract that you're trying to do from your local machine is taking a lot of time. In such cases, what do we do is we create an empty extract and publish it to server. Now, when we do that, what happens is from local machine, whenever you are creating that, it will create a file with zero rows. Now, when you go to server, it will create or it will run that job from the server, picking up all the records from there and it is creating. So let me know if you need a dedicated video on how to create an empty extract in the comment section because again this is a real time and a complicated scenario that many of us might get and implement okay so these two are very important okay so we might face this as a challenge in real time okay so if you are getting a question regarding this you can talk about i mean challenges you can talk about these two situations okay so what is a custom view in tableau server now when i say custom view when we go to Tableau server here, like say I have my Tableau server, assume this is my Tableau server, okay. So, our, and the user is watching this. So this is a default view for any of the user who is in server. Now, whenever he is logging into this particular link, this is how the dashboard will look in. So I have created a dummy server. Now, suppose I'm trying to filter out or, you know, apply some actions on top of that. I have filtered it data. Now, whatever the filter that I am applying, you know, this is currently visible only to me, right? Now, you don't want to perform this operation every day. Like, you know, you don't want to come here, you know, and change the year every day. So until 2024 is completed, you only want to see this sales every day. So in that case, what we can do is we can always click on this save custom view option. Now, when you do this, you can uh, name it as my custom view, whatever you want. Okay. And if you click on this, make it default. Every time you visit your dashboard, this filter will be automatically applied. So make it my default, which means again, this change will only reflect you, not to anyone else. But if you are clicking on make visible to others, this default filter will be applied to all the other users who are using this dashboard as well. So use it wisely and effectively. If at all you want a default filter to be applied on the server every time you visit a uh, report, then you can always so this is from more from an end user perspective not from developer perspective because they want to save their time you know in applying all of this filter so that way it might help them so that is about your custom views here going back to questions here what is difference between left join and a left outer join so there is nothing major difference between left join and left outer join outer is just an optional keyword that can be used in this statement so again to show you that what i'm trying to do is i have two tables here sibling and i color 
okay so i have these two tables in this two tables uh, s name is common in this two okay so i am trying to write a left outer join if you see here and a left join and i'm trying to compare the results so i'm trying trying to run these two queries at the same time now see here there is no difference in the results that is being gen generated so technically speaking it doesn't make much difference outer is just an optional keyword that can be used in a statement okay i hope that makes some sense now coming back to next here in in a tableau consider an employee table with employee id and all how would you calculate employees whose higher salaries whose higher salaries than i mean who have higher salaries than average salaries okay so this you can prepare it in sql as well that will give you an edge but let us try to create it in tableau so for that what i'm trying to do is i'm going to i'm considering subcategory here and i'm taking sales now i want to have all of those sales which are above average so the first thing that we need is average sales right so i'm trying to get that and i'm trying to build it using an lod expression and i'm calling this as average sales okay so first we need to get average sales so for that i'm trying using a fixed lod expression just from learning perspective you can try any other alternate that you might feel will help okay so first i have find out uh, for each subcategory for each subcategory i am trying to get this sum of sales now on top of this i want so let us see what this will result will give i'm just trying to just drop it here okay so we are getting the normal sales right so that is not our intention we want to find out average sales okay so on top of this i'm simply writing exclude subcategory and i'm trying to make average of this results simple okay and i'm closing it now if i click on apply so what is the result we got we got 136855 to cross check this what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to take uh, sales here and drop it on label so we got 23 lakh somewhere here how many items do we have here 17 subcategory items we have so manually i'm trying to find out what is my average so i'm dividing it by 17 so we got 136.855 same result we got which means our average is correct here now i'm trying to write a calculation on top of this okay so above average above or below average so i'm what i'm writing if so again i'm taking fixed uh, at the subcategory level and uh, sum of sales because i have used an lod expression i'm trying to use it same is greater than my average sales okay then it should show as above average otherwise it will be below average i'm ending it okay so click on apply okay now if i take it and try to drop it here maybe we need to convert this into an attribute here so to, we will get that apply okay i'll just take this and drop it here now all the sales that are above our average it is showing as above and below average it is showing as below that way we can you know categorize our sales into above average or below average so you can try alternatives other than fixed lod coming back to next situation here explain a dynamic zone visibility again this is the latest feature that was you know implemented i think in uh, 2022.3 or later versions so again to explain you this scenario i'm trying to create a basic uh, v, uh, condition i'm taking category wise sales and i have subcategory wise sales now what i'm doing is i am trying to create uh, a parameter here 
and in that parameter i am trying to create i'll name it, name it as a dynamic zone visibility okay and i am trying to take a boolean type okay so click on okay so we have created a parameter now my intention is when i click on this furniture automatically only furniture category item should be displayed in subcategory so it is very similar to how we implement a sheet swapping uh, use case using parameter and all so after this i'm trying to create a calculated first step what did we do we created dynamic zone visibility and then i'm trying to create uh, a calculation for that so i'm writing it as c dynamic and i'm only considering true in this okay so apply okay and i want this value to be passed to this item so i'm trying to add it to detail shelf okay i am just dropping that onto my dashboard okay after that what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to add an action here dashboard actions okay let me remove this okay add action change parameter here so when i select sheet one i want this dynamic zone visibility to be taken into consideration and what is the source field the dynamic field that we have created okay that i'm trying to specify here now after this set to value to so when i'm not selecting anything i want i'm setting that value to fall so remember in this calculation we have defaulted the value to true right so click on okay okay now we got that okay so after this i'm trying to take my subcategory and drop it onto the view now what i'm doing is selecting this second sheet going to layout and i'm controlling the visibility of this using this control visibility using value so in this i'm selecting my parameter that we have created dynamic zone visibility now to pass this value from this i'm just clicking on this and i'm clicking on use as filter now when i select furniture only furniture category is getting filtered when i select this it is taking only that value so this is your dynamic zone visibility okay so it is a very simple example that i have taken just to explain you so you can try to implement multiple scenarios using this again it is uh, a very important concept that was recently introduced and it is being asked multiple times so focus on this next is how will you schedule your refresh for hourly basis so again if i go to my server you can always schedule our reports from here so i'm selecting this report that i've just shown you under this extract refreshes if i click on new refresh i can schedule based on the frequency i need so if i click on hourly so every hour it will run from here okay so you can schedule hourly or daily if i select you have different frequencies 2 hours 4 hours 6 hours 8 hours 12 hours like that okay so these are the different types of frequencies that are available and you can select based on your need okay going back to next question uh, so next is the third highest cell i think there were a few sql queries that were asked uh, one question he remembered is third highest salary where department is hr okay so again to explain you that i am taking a very simple use case or standard use case using dense rank i am trying to find again you can do it using multiple approaches but i found this uh, very easy so first what we need to do is we need to find out you know e name salary comma department number from emp if i write this so for each department i first need to find out what is the rank of that right so for that what i am trying to do is i am trying to take or calculate this okay so i'll just write If I run this, 
So now what happened is for each of the department, we are trying to find the rank. Like say 5000 is our first rank, 245 is second rank, 1300 is third rank. Now we need third rank here, right? So you can either specify the filter, but if you need a third rank for every department, that also we can do. Now what I'm doing is to get that on top of this, I'm trying to write another query, like select star from whatever the result I am getting from this, I am taking it and I'm just writing it as Q where salary, this field I'm taking is equal to three. That's it. So always try to break your queries into multiple parts. Now we got third highest salary for each department. If you want for department also, we can filter it for department, but for now I'm keeping it as it is, okay? So this works for single department or multiple department. Okay, I hope this has helped you in understanding. So I think, yeah, these were the questions that were asked in, you know, maybe first level of interview. I hope this has helped you. Please prepare it accordingly. And that's it from my side in this video. Do comment in the comment section. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and have a good day.